good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Gil Zaragoza, and welcome to Bible Concepts with Pastor Gil Zaragoza, where Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and unto Him be the honor and the glory forever and ever. And all the God's people shout a good hearty amen and amen and amen. Praise God Almighty. Well, we have a very powerful telecast. We have a powerful word to share with you this morning. We're talking about what faith is. So grab your Bible or your device grab something to write with, or if you type in your device or your smartphone, whatever you use, amen. Let's go to Faith Seminar. Let's talk about what faith is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let's pray. Let's believe God together for a powerful telecast in Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We bless you. We adore you. We honor you, Father. Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for your anointing that is in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You are welcome into this telecast. We welcome you with all of our hearts. And Father, we thank you for the anointing right now in Jesus' name. And the anointing destroys the yoke of sin. The anointing destroys the yoke of sickness. The anointing destroys the yoke of every demonic attack against the people of God right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We declare right now that Satan is defeated in Jesus' name and Jesus Christ is exalted here in this telecast in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you right now for every need being met right now according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I thank you, Father, right now that you are perfecting that which concerns everyone right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that you are present here in this telecast, working and performing your wonders for your people, for all of us here, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father. And Lord, we thank you for what is being accomplished and what is going to be accomplished for your honor and glory, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, we thank you now for your precious holy written word. And Lord, we as the teacher and the preacher of this telecast, we submit ourselves to your anointing. And Father, flow through us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for revelation knowledge. Thank you, Father, because we have the mind of Christ. We have your precious Holy Spirit operating on the inside of us to declare your word to your people, Father. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Father, for everything that is going to be accomplished here this morning, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for it now. We bless you for it now. In Jesus' mighty name, and all of God's people shout a good hearty, amen and amen and amen. Praise God Almighty. Well, we're talking about what faith is. And of course, our principal scripture is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, which reads as follows for the honor and glory of the Lord. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Praise God. Now, the definition that we're working on concerning what faith is, is this, and it's going to appear there on your screen. Faith is laying hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. I'm going to say that again. Faith is laying hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. I'll say it one more time. Faith is is laying hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. In other words, it's by believing that gets the job done. Again, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We said to you that if it's, not, if it's not now, then it is not faith. We said to you that hope is future tense. It points to the future. Faith is now. In fact, faith proclaims the following. I receive it 
right now in Jesus' name. I believe that I have the answer to my prayer right now in Jesus' name. Now, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus himself said the following for the honor and glory of the Lord. Mark 11, verse 24, Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Look at what the Lord Jesus Christ said right here for the honor and glory of the Lord. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Amen. Now, we have been sharing with you because there's a lot of people uh, that say, well, Pastor Gil, for the longest time, I've always said, I hope I receive. I hope I get the answer. I'm hoping and praying. Hope doesn't get the job done. It's faith that gets the job done. You know, uh, what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, notice that Jesus didn't say, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, hope that you receive them and you will have them. No, Jesus said, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. That's what Jesus said. You know, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Notice that the writer of Hebrews didn't say, But without hope, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God can hope that he is, and that he will one day be a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. No. It, the, the, the Hebrews 11.6 says this, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Notice the scripture, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, must believe that He is, must believe that He is, and that He's a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. Now, we said to you that hope does have its place in the Word of God. And we made this statement to you, if we keep hope in its right place, then it will be the most blessed and mighty reality to us as believers. I'm going to say it again. If we keep hope in its right place, then it will be the most blessed and mighty reality to us as believers. I'll say it one more time. If we keep hope in its right place, then it will be the most blessed and mighty reality to us as believers. The Apostle Paul wrote something very powerful in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 13. Uh, yeah, verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. That's the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. The Apostle Paul wrote something very powerful in this particular verse, and it says this, And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now, notice that the Apostle Paul didn't say that faith and hope are not important. He merely wrote that the greatest of the three is charity or love. But each of them have its place in the Word of God. In other words, you cannot substitute love for hope, and you cannot substitute hope for faith. Yet, there are a growing number of Christians that are misplacing all three. Now, in this context, there are people that are misplacing hope for faith. Uh, and, and there are some Christians in the body of Christ that misplace love, they misplace hope, and they misplace faith. Each of them has its place. Now, let me, let me, say, something, you know, let me say something to you right now, because there are people that will say, well, Pastor Gill, and people have said it to me, well, Pastor Gill, if you take my hope away from me, I won't have anything left. How dare you take my hope away from me? No, I, I, I am not taking hope away from you. I'm not taking a, away hope from you. What I am showing you through Scripture is that your hope is misplaced. In order to receive from God, you do not hope. 
you believe. Remember what Jesus said. He said in Mark 11, uh, verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. Believe. Believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. And again, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Now, we have been saying to you that we do have a blessed hope. Now, you may ask, well, what is the blessed hope, Pastor Gill? Well, the blessed hope of the Christian, the blessed hope of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the soon return of Jesus. Jesus is coming again. He is returning. The soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the saved dead, the rapture of the living saints, the hope of heaven, and the hope of seeing our loved ones and friends in heaven when the rapture of the church takes place, it takes place when Jesus comes again. Now, we have, we have been sharing to you scriptures that define the blessed hope of the, of, the, of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Why don't we go there? Let's go ahead and, and, and find out what this blessed hope is. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. We find here in this account, these, uh, this is Jesus addressing His disciples before He ascends to heaven. And starting with Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 4, Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 4, appearing there on your screen, Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 11, starting with verse 4, look at what the Scripture says right here for the honor and glory of the Lord. Verse 4 of Acts chapter 1, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, Jesus, Ye have heard of me, verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Verse 7, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, Verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, verse 9, Jesus, when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly Toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Glory to God. Now, how is this all going to happen? Well, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. And let's read. Let's find out in Scripture how this is going to come about. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Look at what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting with verse 13. It reads as follows. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from, from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Watch this. And with the trump of God. Let me read verse 16 again. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. <laughs> Glory to God. This is going to be a monumental event. Now, let's go ahead and read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And the Apostle Paul is going to give us even further insights on how this is going to happen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 58. Look at what the Apostle Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to the church in Corinth. He wrote these words for the honor and glory of the Lord, starting with verse 50 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, glory to God, verse 57, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Glory to God. This is a shout. Amen. Jesus is coming again. The saved dead is going to be resurrected first, and then the living saints are going to be raptured to be along with those that have gone before us to meet the Lord in the air, and we will be forever with the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 7, look at what the apostle John wrote. Actually, he's describing a vision that he had in the Isle of Patmos, and he saw in a vision a new heaven and a new earth. Now we're going to pick this up in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Look at what the Holy Ghost inspired the Apostle John to write as he saw the vision, starting with verse 1 of Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Thank God. Hallelujah. This is a blessed hope. Thank God for this hope. Can you shout a good hallelujah out there? <laughs> Amen. And we rejoice as Christians in this hope. We really do. But I want to make something very clear. This is all future tense. 
This is future tense. Jesus Christ is coming again, whether we believe it or not. He's coming back again. Why do you say this, Pastor Gil? Because the word, the word of God here, we just read it right now. God's Word has declared that Jesus Christ is coming again. The resurrection of the saved dead is going to take place, whether we have faith in it or not. The rapture of the living saints of God will take place, whether we believe in it or not. Our loved ones and friends who have gone before us are already in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, whether we believe in it or not. Amen. We, regardless, this blessed hope is going to take place whether we believe in it or not. Amen. Now, I want to say something here because, you know, there are a lot of people that are using their faith to bring Jesus back to the earth. And I want to make something very clear. Our faith is not going to bring Jesus back. In other words, we cannot believe for Jesus to come back at a particular time, at a particular season, at a particular moment, and then have our faith bring him back. If this were true, then the entire body of Christ could collectively come together and in the blink of an eye believe with all of their might for Jesus to come back and for their faith to bring him back. No, that, that, that's, that's, that's not possible. Now we're misplacing our faith for hope and then there are people that misplace their hope for faith. No, faith, hope, and charity. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, faith, hope, hope, and charity have their place. Amen. Our faith in God is not going to bring Jesus back. He is coming. Amen. Whether we believe in it or not. In fact, no one knows the day or the hour when Jesus is coming. I'll show you by scripture to what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, or Mark, not Mark chapter 11, Matthew chapter 24. <laughs> Matthew chapter 24. That was a blooper there, but praise God. We're doing this live, so praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Matthew chapter 24, verses 34 through 44. Matthew chapter 24, verses 34 through 44. Look at what Jesus himself declared. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 34 through 44. Look at what Jesus said right here in this portion of Scripture for the honor and glory of the Lord. It reads as follows for the honor and glory of the Lord. Watch this. Verily, This is what Jesus is saying right here. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 40, Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Jesus is coming. We don't know the day nor the hour. 
but He is coming. And our responsibility as Christians is to be ready for His coming. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming, but it's all future tense because we don't know when this will happen. But what we do know, that it will happen. And we also know that this is a blessed hope, and it is also a purifying hope. John wrote the following in 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. He wrote this, and we're going to finish off with this scripture, and we'll pick up next week into what the Lord would have for us. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Look at what the Apostle John wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, starting with verse 1 in the name of the Lord. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And every man that hath this hope in Him purifieth himself, even as He is pure. Amen. Now, this blessed hope is future tense. Now, personally, I'm going to tell you something right now. I firmly believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ is coming. But He is coming back <laughs> regardless whether I believe it or not. I just happen to believe it. But He's coming whether I believe it or not. And let me tell you something. Whether people don't believe the coming of Jesus, guess what? He is coming whether you believe it or not. He is coming. We don't know the day or the hour but He is coming back, and we are to be ready for His coming in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, thank you for our time that we've had here together. Father, we praise you. We magnify you. We adore you. Thank you for your word this morning. And we give you praise and honor forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. God be with you. In Jesus' name, amen.